The men's basketball program in Bloomington, Indiana, is in need of a rebirth, and they believe they have found their man. Mike Woodson is about to be introduced as the new head coach of the Hoosiers, and when he steps to the podium, we will take you out there live here on the Big Ten Network. Hi there from Chicago. I'm Mike Hall. Glad to have you with us on this historic day as the 30th head coach in the history of this storied program is about to make it official. We go out to Bloomington right now. Scott Dolson is the athletic director who is ready to introduce Mike Woodson Terry right Warren now. Terry Warren and our women's team, just all the best uh, with the big game tonight. I'm leaving here actually uh, early this afternoon to head down to San Antonio and uh, just couldn't be more thrilled, more proud of our team. You know, when I, we made the decision to make a change in men's basketball, it was the same day as the women's selection show. And I went to visit, I went to the selection program with our team, and I talked to Coach Morin. I apologized to her because I did not want this selection process to take anything away from the great things that are happening with women's basketball. And she's just been fantastic. And I uh, just can't thank her enough. We've stayed in close contact. In fact, she set up a Zoom call for me to talk to the team this past Friday night before the, the uh, Sweet 16 game, which I told Heidi, my wife, afterwards, was, was so incredible. And uh, Coach Morin thanked me, but it was more meaningful to me, I think, than it was for the team. And so, um, you know, I know Hoosier Nations down in San Antonio. I just want our women's team to know how much we're behind them and ready for the game tonight. Also, before I talk about uh, the great news today with our men's program, I do want to say some special thank yous that's really, really, this is really, really important to me that I thank some special people that are really invaluable in this process. I want to start with President McRobbie. President McRobbie has just been uh, incredibly supportive. Uh, just can't thank him enough. I know he's got a million things on his plate. He answered every call I had throughout these last two weeks and made me feel like uh, he was, uh, I was his number one priority. And, and as always, ask incredible questions and uh, just the collaborative process with him was terrific and just want to thank him so much uh, for his support. I want to thank the Board of Trustees, in particular Quinn Buckner. You know, Quinn and I go way back. Uh, Quinn, uh, I utilize as a liaison in this, in this process. Quinn and I, uh, we talk about being mission driven and uh, we were mission driven on several other projects we've had and we were mission driven on this project. And I can just say this, I'm a better leader for having the opportunity to work so closely with Quinn Buckner. And uh, I just want him to know how much I appreciate that. I want to thank my wife, Heidi. Uh, Heidi, uh, I, part of this process, I hold myself up in the basement of our house and she brought meals down to me uh, regularly and would always say that when this is over, you don't think this is gonna continue. This is, this is it, this is it for, the, uh, for the wait service, but she was my rock and I appreciate that. And just thank my kids as well. Uh, we've got five kids and uh, not w one single, we had three birthdays during this process of the five kids. They all go from 21 up to 28. And not one time did any of our kids ask me one question about any candidate or who's on the list. And, and uh, even our youngest, who's a junior here at IU, that just impressed me so much that uh, they just get it. And uh, they just want to be supportive and they love IU like, like we do and just want to thank them. There's, there's two members of our senior administrative, all of our senior administrative team and athletics have been huge, but two members I'm particularly single out, uh, Deputy AD Stephen Harper and uh, Senior Associate AD for Sport Administration, Becky Panny, who throughout this process just worked tirelessly uh, the last two weeks and, and actually before that. And uh, I, I hate to highlight them because I don't want anybody to try to steal them from us, but uh, they've been fantastic. And then there's others and I hate to, but Maddie White, our Deputy AD who's down in San Antonio, Holding, the, holding down the fort with women's basketball. Uh, Lorian Price, who's our senior associate AD for, AD for academics, who's been incredible in this transition process in uh, leading the transition team. And then finally, we, we created a vision document. And this whole thing today is about the vision for IU basketball, the future. And uh, after we made the change, we created a document that really spelled out that vision. And we had two staff members, Allie Ricker and John Decker, who were actually on vacation. And while they're on vacation, uh, worked tirelessly for two days to turn, turn around a document uh, that was a vision that, that we'd created that would have taken a month at least. And, uh, you know, again, I just sell you that because it's all about team. And that's the theme you're going to hear the more I talk today. I didn't use a search committee, as you, as you know, uh, but I relied on just 
so many experts that I talked to, experts in the NBA, from owners to general managers to scouts, experts in college, coaches, uh, athletic directors, commissioners, and uh, they know who they are. And there, there's some names, and I'll keep that confidential out of respect for them and the process, but they know who they are, and I just want them to know I just can't thank them for enough for the time they took to really help me walk through this process and do the deep dive and due diligence that I wanted to do. And uh, there's some names on there that would probably surprise people how much time they put in. The NBA trade, trade deadline was going on during this process, and I had people that were so heavily involved in that but took literally l l large amounts of time to help me through this process and give me great advice. I want to mention Fred Glass and thank Fred. Uh, Fred... Our former athletic director, one of my mentors, uh, he told me from the start he did, not, he did not want to know one candidate. That was our deal, but he wanted to be there to support me and sent me message after message just to support, as always, and just having him as a rock means, means the world to me. I want to thank our fans. Our fans uh, are, are resilient, uh, their passion, their support, and I want our fans to know that we all want the same things, and uh, I just hope they know how much we appreciate that. I want to thank our former players and managers. I cannot tell you the support, the messages. I'm so behind in text messages right now that it's embarrassing, but I want them to know um, that from my deepest of my heart, I appreciate their support and their love for this program. And then finally, and most importantly, I want to thank our current players. Our current players, uh, as I said two weeks ago, uh, change is hard, and uh, the fear of the unknown is hard. But our former players... Uh, uh, handled this uh, it, it couldn't couldn't have handled any better and and, and I'll say this they um, they were resilient and they were so helpful I've had two zoom meetings in the last two weeks with the full team and several one-off conversations and really they helped me in this process and give me ideas of characteristics that were important to them um, and I give Archie Miller a ton of credit in terms of the quality of, of young men we have the character and uh, just who's in that locker room. And I just wanted our, our, our current players to know how much I appreciate that. So moving forward, uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to welcome Thad Mata, Thad and Barbara and, and, and the, the girls to the, to the program and just uh, quickly mention really the vision for that. And really the, the, the partnership with Thad really came about after my first meeting with, with Coach Woodson. Coach Woodson and I had an incredible first meeting and, and we talked about the vision for the program and how to bridge the, the past to the future. And one of the things that he said to me, which struck me, uh, is that he's a collaborator. He, he, one of the things that's really important to him is putting great people around him. And he says, Scott, you and I will be joined at the hip. If, if we do this, this is a partnership. And it actually was music to my ears because that's what I was looking for. Not for me to micromanage the program, but this needs to be a unified effort. And it was really, really important to him. As, as I move forward in the process, and after s several meetings, I realized that I'm joined at the hip with a lot of our coaches. And for me to put all my resources, although obviously basketball is so critical to us, that I needed some help. At the same time, Coach Woodson was asking me for resources around him. And so I actually uh, came to him, uh, went to Thad, and, and thought I f there was a perfect maybe marriage there for Thad to help me and the needs I had to make certain I had the resources with basketball and that Coach Woodson, uh, he'd mentioned to me that he had a partnership with Glenn Grunwald when he was with the Knicks as the head coach and it was incredible to have a resource to bounce things off of and I, I felt like this could be a perfect fit. So it worked out great and, the, and kind of the rest is history but I, I'll say this, um, Mike Woodson is 100% the head coach. He, he reports to me and uh, is, is the final decision maker based on my final approval on basketball decisions. Thad reports to me is a key resource for me and for Thad and, uh, or, and for Mike and is really uh, just can't thank him enough for being a part of our program. Having said all that, I'm excited to get to the, to the, to the main uh, agenda item right now is that I'm just so excited to make the introduction I'm getting ready to make. You know, I said two weeks ago, that we were, gonna, we were gonna build on our foundation. It was really important that we, we, we have a celebrated history, as you all know, in basketball, but the really most important thing is we have a vision for the future. And the plan was to focus on that vision for the future. So ultimately, there were three reasons why I ended up, which, which I feel 
uh, to me was the perfect choice. And, and, and I can summarize it in three things. The, the first thing is, is that I feel that Coach Woodson was a perfect fit as a person. And I'm talking, I've talked to people who, the people I talked to had no idea who I was leaning towards, who was in, in, in the mix, not. But I'm talking about people all across basketball, all across, to a person. They said there's no better person than Mike Woodson as a person. And that meant a lot. And the other thing they said, and I had someone really, really I respect in basketball say to me that we need someone that's a normal person, that just fits in. We need them to fit in and collaborate and be a part of a team. And I can't tell you how many people told me uh, what Mike stood for as a person. And I knew Mike, but not, not great. We were acquaintances um, with my relationship being around here. But he was the right person, and that was really important. The second thing is, is that, as again, as I did my deep dive, Mike's known as a visionary. Uh, Mike's an X's and O's guy. Mike, uh, in, in the NBA, in circles of people that uh, at the highest level that I talked to, talked about his visionary pick-and-roll defense that he started in Atlanta that became the normal way for defenses to play moving forward for his visionary offense, this, this one in and four out. And I'm talking to people that weren't advocating for Mike. They had new, I, no idea where I was in the search who talked about there's no better mind in the NBA than Mike Woodson. And it, it, it hit me as we're looking for the future. That was really, really important. And then the final piece, which is, is obviously the most important, is I wanted to partner someone who shared the same vision, the same passion, the same, the same uh, plan moving forward, because I think it's all about the plan. And it was clear uh, that Mike was the right choice. He, fit, he checked those boxes among all others. So with saying all, all that, I just can't tell you how excited I am today, how proud I am to announce to all of you and to Hoosier Nation today, the next head basketball coach at Indiana University, Mike Woodson. Mike. Mike, we got a little, we got to, we got to get your uniform back out. We'll get a little. Uh, well, thank you. Little. Thank you. I haven't seen this in a long time. Yeah. They said it still fits. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Um, before I even open the floor up for our questions, um, there are so many people that I want to acknowledge um, for me being here today. Um, Coach Bob Knight, who means so much to Indiana basketball. And he took a chance on a kid out of Indianapolis many years ago to come here and play basketball. And it was a journey for Mike Woodson. And coming to Indiana University, to Indiana University to play basketball, he taught me how to play the game of basketball from a fundamental standpoint. He taught me how to be a man on and off the floor. And that was huge for me coming out of the inner cities of Indianapolis. Um, so I pay tribute to Coach Knight in the utmost way because Indiana basketball will always be Bob Knight. Will always be. It was great that he came back in February a year ago uh, and all the ex-players that surrounded him, the fans. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. So Karen... Coach, I love you guys, and for me, this is a complete circle. You know, I've done pretty much everything that I wanted to do in basketball. Um, I've never dreamed of playing, you know, professionally. You don't go in to college, at, particularly at that particular time, that you're thinking that you're going to play professional basketball. And I was just trying to get an education, which I promised my mother and my sisters and brothers. And I got that and was able to get drafted in the NBA. 
and fortunate enough to have played 11 years. So it all worked hand in hand in making my decision to come to Indiana University. And then I got into this crazy game of coaching. And, you know, I have a lot of people to thank for that. Cotton Fitzsimmons, who was one of my early mentors in my early days as a pro player, was the guy who summoned me to come to Phoenix and start coaching. And from that day on, it took off for me. Uh, the juices started to flow. And I just felt, after I left the game of playing, I had something to offer some young kid as a, as a coach, on and off the floor, because I like to think the years that I played here at Indiana University, Coach Knight did something right, because I turned out just fine. So in that regard, I felt I had something to give back. And I was able to do that over the years of coaching uh, you know, I assistant coach for about eight years, and then I got my big break as a head coach after winning an NBA title with the great Larry Brown in Detroit. So, you know, it, it's been a it's been a nice run in the NBA, but to be able to circle back and come back home and coach in the University basketball means a great deal to me. You know, it's never been about me as a person. You know, I. I do what I do because I have a beautiful wife and two daughters who have allowed me over the years to do what I do. And Terry, Alexis, Mariah, unbelievable people. I mean, they the rock that I stand on. So for me to come back here, to be in front of all my fans and family and it, it, and friends, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, I never dreamed, dreamt that this would ever happen to me. But I'm here. And I have so many other people to thank. President McRobbie, um, Scott for taking the time to fly. I, I know he called me and said he wanted to speak with me. And, and he wanted to do a Zoom. And I told him, I said, if you're interested in Mike Woodson, either I get on a plane or you get on a plane and you come see me. And he said, I'll be there tomorrow morning, the next day. So it was, I thought, a, a great interview um, in terms of getting to know one another. Um, didn't know if I was going to get the job, but I felt good about my position and what I had presented in terms of helping to move the needle here at Indiana University. So, Scott, I thank you for making that trip to see me. Um, there are people here today that i like to thank before we get really into this, and that's my family members that are here. Um, Scott, Quinn, can't say enough, brother. You know, you guys have been in my corner for many, many years. And I thank you. Um, Wayne Junior Rafford is here today. And I know his dad is very happy today. Wayne, thanks for coming, brother. I want to thank my Nick family for allowing me to get out of my contract and, and come home. You know, Jim Dolan gets a bad rap in New York. But he was a great owner for me. He allowed me to head coach and he allowed me to come back and be an assistant. I have him to thank Leon, Wes, Scott Perry, and Tom Thibodeau. What a great coach. His beautiful staff that they've assembled in New York has allowed me 
to do what I do now and be able to come back and be a coach here at Indiana University. They didn't have to do that, but they did. So I thank them very much from the bottom of my heart. Miss D and all the front office and medical and trainers, everybody in that Nick organization is first class. And um, I have them to thank for me standing here today. So thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the Ferguson family, Steve, Connie, and Matt, and his whole family, because he's been a major mentor in my life. Um, the Cook family, Bill, who's no longer with us, known him for very many, many years. And he was one of my early mentors, he and Gail Cook and Carl. Um, just a beautiful family. Nitra House, I know you, if you're listening, boy, you were very instrumental in me getting through school. Want to thank you. Uh, Nancy Cross, who lives here in town, I know she's happy that I'm back. Bob Hamill. <laughs> we go a long way back. I said I wasn't going to get sensitive, but boy, this, this is a great day for Mike Woodson and his family. And it's a great day for the fans and Hoosier Nation, I think, because it's going to be my job to bridge the gap between young people who don't know who Coach Woodson is and the old timers that do know who I am. And I'm going to bring all the old timers back like the old days, and we're going to bridge the gap between old and new. And at the end of the day, it's about two people or two things, and that's the fans and our basketball program and our players. Our players will be first and foremost. I spoke to the guys last night, and I think they understand who Coach Woodson is early on because I've told them that this whole program is going to be about family and being about family there's a lot of things that comes with that you know they are looking for me to get them where they need to go and I'm looking at them to get any basketball where it needs to go and that's that's going to be huge because I'm a coach that push and grab and and I try to get the most out of my players and that word accountability is so important when you look at players and you talk about coaching so um, I'm going to meet with each player individually today and kind of see where their heart and mind are and talk about moving this program in the right direction and that's getting it back on top. Uh, that's why I'm here. Um, I'm excited about being here. Um, Scott, you just have no idea. It's just, this is a, a wonderful day. So with that being said, and I'm sure I've, I've missed some, some people that I, I need to thank, but yeah, they know who they are. I appreciate all the support I've gotten over the years. Um, and all the old timers, the ex players that played here, hey, I've I've gotten a lot of phone calls from you guys reaching out and and, and trust me I'll when time comes I'll return the calls, but I I appreciate the support, I really do. So with that being said, I will open the floor up for questions. So here we go. Is Rick Bozich? Yeah, hi, Mike. Um, how long has it been your uh, goal to be the coach at IU, and what do you think the biggest challenges are that you face? Well, it's always been my goal. Um, you know, when I was doing my thing in in the NBA as a head coach, I think the timing when when the jobs opened up here were not in my favor because I had a, I had a job and 
Um, I never really tried to pursue it, but one time, and um, and I did I didn't get the job, and so I went on back to my NBA world, and and that's where I remained until yesterday, and when Jim Dolan gave me the opportunity to get on a plane and and come here for the job, uh, but. You know, I've I've watched Indiana basketball all my life from afar, even though the 30 years that I've spent plus in the NBA, um, I was always glued to Indiana basketball, and I that would never change. I mean, it's just it's it's a big part of my life. Uh, so, you know, we had our ups and downs over the years. I get that, but. I've always been true to Indiana basketball, so to be able to circle back and give it another shot and, and trying to come back as the head coach, this time I was able to get it done. Bob Kravitz. Yeah, Mike, uh, well, welcome home. Excuse the uh, echo. Um, um, the one concern is your lack of college basketball experience. How do you plan to bridge the gap there? This is echoing. I can't. I'm sorry. I couldn't understand that because of the... Yeah. I understand. Is there anything we can do? I'm sorry. I can't. I can't understand what you're saying. Can that be fixed with the college coaching Come in a little bit clearer. And if you can understand it, maybe you can repeat the question. It'd be great. Are you concerned about your lack of college experience? Not at all. Um, you know, basketball to me is basketball. Um, sure, I've never coached in college, but I like to think that I've coached at the highest level. Uh, and I've coached some of the greatest players that's ever graced the, the basketball world. Um, the NBA family is a beautiful thing, guys. I mean, and I've been fortunate enough to, to be a part of that for 30 plus years. So, um, yes, there are going to be some challenges. You know, me coming back here to coach this great university and this, bas this basketball team. But... At the end of the day, coaching is coaching. You know, I got to get players, uh, go out and recruit quality student athletes that can come in here and and help this program move in the right direction. And I got to groom these young men to be men on and off the floor. That's what it's all about. Somebody took a chance, like I said earlier, on me. And I turned out just fine. So uh, there will be challenges, but I'm going to try to surround myself with people that can help me navigate some of the challenges. Um, but at the end of the day, I got to put a product on the floor that Hoosier fans will love from a defensive standpoint and from an offensive standpoint in terms of winning basketball games. I mean, I got to teach and develop players. That's the only way it's going to get done in terms of building a program to win. Coach, this is from uh, Jeff Brad Johns. You mentioned bridging the gap. Um, this will be the first time that uh, you have recruited. If you were talking to a prospect right now, what would your message be? Well, again, it wouldn't be my first time recruiting. First time recruiting in college. Um, you know, I, we recruit all the time in the NBA. You know, the, the one year I coached the Atlanta Hawks, when I was given that job, I had the youngest team in the history of the game, and they were all recruits from the college game where you had to go out and do background checks, medical checks. I mean, all kind of things in terms of bringing a player in that you think that can help build your program. So, you know, we're not new to recruiting, free agency. You got to go out and recruit. Uh, but we're recruiting younger people now, and I get that. And, um, 
You know, I remember when Coach came in to recruit me. You know, I all those things come into play. Um, yeah, I've been far removed from it, but I honestly believe I can go in a kid's home and be able to relate because of what I've gone through in my career. And I have a story to tell, I do. And if that kid's willing to listen and he buys into my story, I think I can get him to come to Indiana University. So, um, yeah, recruiting is hard because you got a lot of coaches out there trying to recruit and the, the best talent to help their their respective teams win basketball games. Well, I'm going to be in that same pool, and I'm going to go out and try to do it the right way, and we'll do it the right way, and and we'll win the right way once I get quality kids here that I think can help us win basketball games. Case from Mike Peter. Do you have staff members in mind, and what are you prioritizing with your assistant coach hires? Well, yes, I have staff people in, in, in mind, and, you know, I will sit down with uh, Scott and Thad and kind of assess some of the coaches that, you know, I'm getting all kind of calls from friends and coaches that, you know, that want to come and, and help me. Uh, and then I have I have my, uh, my list of coaches that I think can help me. So we will collaborate together and, and figure out what's good for Mike Woodson and the Indiana University program moving forward. Um, coaching is important. You know, I think you got to put people around you that you trust, people around you that's willing to work hard. That's what I've done in my two stops as an NBA head coach. Um, I tried to put people that's going to work and that's going to be loyal and, and, and help me develop young players to be basketball players and, and good people off the floor. Coaches from Eric, can you explain to everyone why it is important to have the former players at IU be part of the current program and how that impacts the current players? Well, it impacts it in a huge way. Um, all I can talk about is the days when Coach Knight was here and how you know, he, he had everybody come back every year. And that was a, a, a beautiful reunion, man. I mean, I miss those days. And I'm going to bring those days back because I think it's important. A lot of these old-timers, uh, they probably look at me as an old-timer. You know, we laid the groundwork for where we are today. And they, those players should never, ever be forgotten. Uh, and in my heart, they won't ever be forgotten. So I will bring them all back uh, and bridge this gap uh, that's so desperately needed uh, with the young players and, and the young fan base that we do have. You know, a lot of these young fan base, they don't know who I am, and I get that. Uh, my daughters kind of remind me of that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, I've been chosen to be the coach here, and I'm going to try to all t tie it together to make it all work, and we all be one big family and win basketball games. Coaches from Zach Osterman, what will your message be to the players as you sit down with them today? What kind of vision will you outline to them? Well, again, moving forward, you know, we have a few players that have entered the portal. Um, players that I think can help us win basketball games next season. So um, my first job is to sit down with each one of them and, and talk about staying in Hoosier Nation. You know, that's what's important, you know. And, uh, and if I got to plead and beg a little bit to, to keep them here, I'm going to do that. But again, they got to make the final decision on what they want to do. But there's no better place in the country to play basketball, I think. And that's what I'm going to relay to them. Uh, I'm going to let them know that I'm in their corner, um, that we're family. I'm going to always have an open door policy where they can come in and talk to Coach Woodson. You know, I've never strayed away from that over the years. Um, so. 
um, there's a lot of a lot that I have to do once I leave this press conference in terms of sitting down with each individual player and 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 having a powwow uh, with them and see where their heart is. Okay, next question is from Alex Bosich. Did you know Thad well before this, and what do you envision his role being with the program? Well, I've always watched Thad from afar. Uh, again, I follow the Big Ten, and Thad has had major success in the Big Ten as a as a head coach. Uh, the 13 years he coached the Ohio State team, and you know, I had my battles with Herb Williams, who was a great Ohio State player and who worked for me in New York. So we always kind of go around about with one another during the Big Ten season. So, yeah, I've uh, I've watched that from afar. Uh, this is the first time I've actually had an opportunity to sit and talk with that. Um, uh, again, great basketball mind. Um, my ego has always been intact in terms of being able to accept great basketball minds and what they're thinking. You know, I think that's healthy from a coaching standpoint. Um, and I think it can't do nothing but help me as I uh, I move up the road in trying to build this basketball team. So I'm grateful that Thad's on board. Um, again, we got to put a staff together, and we'll work towards that here in the next week or so. Coaches from Dustin, what vision do you have for the team and for this program? as far as style of play is concerned on offense and defense. Scott mentioned when he made the hire that he wanted a team to be on the cutting edge and play a modern style of basketball. What does that mean to you? Well, again, I, you know, when I look at college basketball, a lot of it is, you know, they're, they're taking things from our league now and they're, you know, their defense or switching defenses, uh, a lot of zone. Uh, may it be three-quarter court, half-quarter uh, zone defenses. Um, offensively, you know, they're shooting a lot of threes like the NBA. Um, so when I look at college basketball and the fact that our game is starting to come this way in a major way, I think I can bring a system in that from a defensive standpoint where, you know, we can recruit players that are capable of playing three or four positions. That's kind of how I did it in the pros. Um, players that if you did switch defensively, you felt good about them. That player guarding the ball and players that are committed to rebounding the basketball. I think when you build a defensive system, if you everybody's connected together and, and work hard to defend not only the ball, but when there's a breakdown and rebound the basketball as a unit, you put yourselves in position to win basketball games, a la New York Knicks. Um, offensively, the three ball has changed the game. There's no doubt about that. So, you know, we got to recruit players that can shoot the ball and pass and dribble and be able to make plays for one another. And in doing that, I think I can create an offense that everybody touches the basketball and, and if you can shoot the basketball, then you expect to just shoot it and make shots. If you can't shoot it, then you got to do other things to help us win basketball games. So um, it's my job to go out again and put the best team possible on the floor that can do those things. But the style has is, is changed, like I said, and it's a beautiful style. I mean, I don't think you can always just live on shooting threes, but it's great if you got a team that, that can make it. You know, I mean, we – we built a team in New York with Grunwan and Jim Dolan and myself um, where we bought in eight new players that season and and all eight could shoot the three ball and our core group was fabulous at shooting the threes and 
we led the league in threes taken, threes made, and with third and three-point percentage. Uh, and that team ended up winning the division that year. So uh, the three ball has changed the game, and we got to find players that can make the three ball as well. Coaches from Jeff Rab Johns, Calvert Cheney told me one of your biggest strengths is adapting to the talent that you have year to year. Can you give us a couple examples of that? Well, you know, when I started in Atlanta, I started out with 18, 19, 20-year-old young men. And I wasn't realistic when I came into Atlanta because i just come off a title run in Detroit where we won an NBA title. So I honestly felt when I went to Atlanta that I could win an NBA title that year because I was on such a high. And that just wasn't realistic. But I never sold those players on not making the playoffs. When you look back at that team, Josh Smith, Josh Childress, Royal Ivy, Dante Smith, Salim Stoudemire, Marvin Wimp, these are all young babies. And that ownership was fortunate enough to stick with me. Um, they gave me the resources, you know, they gave me the opportunity to build that team. And, and three years later, we were in the playoffs playing the Boston Celtics to a game seven who ended up winning the NBA title that year. So, um, you know, it's basketball is funny, but, you know, we just got to keep pushing and, and, and pushing players to do the right thing on and off the floor. So, Coaches from Dana, can you talk about growing up in Indianapolis your childhood, family, high school career? Well, you know, I'm from a major, big family of 12 brothers and sisters. I lost my parents at a at a very young age, and I've lost some siblings along the way. Uh, but growing up in Indianapolis and playing the game of basketball, you know, there just was, wasn't a, a place you couldn't go get a to get a basketball game in Indianapolis. And the talent back then was just, it was tremendous, man. I mean, I can go in every area of Indianapolis and and play pickup basketball and, and play at a high level with great talent. And, you know, I don't know if it's still that way today, but it was loaded back then. And, um, and everybody who played, basketball they always had their eyes on indiana university or purdue or notre dame but i always had my eyes on indiana university and the basketball program because it was so powerful at that time and every year you knew that indiana was in position to to do something special and that's what i wanted to be a part of and i remember my sixth grade teacher which I couldn't afford at that time to, to go to Bob Knight's camp, pay for me to come down. And I ended up winning um, a three-on-three -three contest at Coach Knight's camp with two other kids. And Coach gave me a T-shirt and told me he would follow me my senior year in high school. And that's all I needed to hear. And I had a great senior year and he came knocking, and I made the decision to come here and play basketball. So it all started in Indianapolis growing up. Okay, Coach, last question from Kent. How do you feel about the players you have inherited? Do they fit the system that you want to play, or do you want to craft a system to your players' strengths? You know, I've watched a, a few games, you know, of the Hoosiers this year, and um, you know, and they've had their ups and downs. Uh, I get it. Um, you know, the pandemic hadn't helped, uh, I guess, sort of their psyche and their way of thinking in terms of college life here on the, on campus. Um, but, you know, I got to assess, you know, after watch, going back today and I'll go and watch more film and I got to assess after speaking with these young men 
and get their feelings on this past season um, and what they're thinking is on staying or leaving because some decisions have got to be made if they decide to leave. Um, but I'm going to do my best, put my best foot forward to see that the guys that I think can help us move forward in this program, that they stay on board. Um, but if not, then I got to build a plan B and probably go in the portal and try to fly, find players that I think fits the system that can help us win basketball games here. Coach, I did have one, one more question. Uh, NBA people have praised you for your player development skills with young guys in the league. Can you see that skill immediately helping you, you here at this level too? Well, it's going to have to help me because I think when you get a younger player, there's so much that that young player has to be taught. And that's on and off the floor. I, I, I harp on that off the floor thing so much because it, it goes hand in hand, academics and and uh, basketball, you can't separate them. Um, but the development program and development of individual players is vital. I don't care what level it is and what sport it is. If you don't develop, you know, you, you just you struggle, I think. And, you know, over the years, all the teams in the NBA that I've worked with, we've been able to develop great players, man. And, you know, it takes time. Uh, but if the player is willing to accept coaching, because it's demanding, you know, I mean, hell, it wasn't easy for me. And I turned out just fine. And I'm going to push guys. To, I'm going to be demanding that they work, come to the gym, and put the time in. And I think if they do that, good things will happen. And then in the long run, we'll all, we'll all benefit from it from a basketball standpoint. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. At this time, we'll have Scott go back up to answer a few questions. All right, thank you. Take my jersey, Scott. <laughs> Okay, Scott, um, what was the process like for you? What was the first meeting like, you going to Mike, and what really connected you with Mike early on in this process? Yeah, the process is probably not as complicated as, as a lot of people think. I mean, I really um, spent a great deal of time early on focusing on the vision that I mentioned earlier, and at the same time creating a list of Candidates that, that I thought of, candidates that were identified through people liaisons letting me know and, uh, and working through that and then just lots and lots and lots of, of phone calls and due diligence with people I trust. In the first meeting with Mike, you know, I talked about earlier, uh, it was just clear the priorities that I'd identified in the vision for the program that, that, that he, he got it, that, that it, there was an a immediate connection with us and one of the things that stood out is, again, the type of person he is, the respect he has, but the collaboration. Because I'm a big believer from a leadership standpoint in, in teamwork and surrounding yourself with great people. I, I say that about the staff I work with and our team. I say that about our other coaches and their staffs. And, and that's exactly what Mike was saying to me, not even knowing that that was really critically important to me. And he said it earlier, um, there's no ego. It's not about Mike Woodson. Uh, it's about uh, a vision for the program in the future and building on our tradition of excellence. And so we hit it off right away, and that meant a lot to me. Um, this is from Jeff. How did you come up with the idea of a partnership between Mike Woodson and Thad Mata, and how did you pick Mata as the partner for Coach Woodson? Yeah, it really came out. I was I was flying back on the airplane from New York after our, our first visit, and it just struck me. I kept thinking about Mike, the success he's had, and how he had partnered. I kept thinking about Glenn Grunwald, and I thought about my role in putting this team together. And I'd had conversations with, with Thad, and Thad and I, uh, from the start, as I talked to him, 
you know, a lot of people don't know, but Thad's got an incredible passion for Indiana basketball. You know, Thad and I, I'm two years older than Thad, but we're both products of the 1976 team. He grew up an incredible fan. In fact, uh, uh, Scott Eels, a player on that team, was from, uh, I would say, Hoopston, Hoopston, Illinois, that Thad uh, grew up following Scott Eels and followed Indiana basketball. He was at the game when Scott May broke his arm in 1975. And, and so in my mind, I started thinking about uh, this team and it really based on what Woody was asking me for and what he needed. And then knowing uh, in my conversation with Thad, uh, his basketball uh, mind, his knowledge of the business uh, speaks for itself. Uh, I just started formulating this plan again uh, and the next step is assistant coaches and so forth and so on. But for us to do the things that we want to do for the vision, it's all about picking the right leader. It's kind of what I've said before about Tom Allen, or I'll say it about Terry Morin or Todd Yegley, but it all starts and stops with the head coach. And clearly Mike Woodson is, is the leader we need. But it's imperative on me to surround the head coach with the resources to make things happen and to achieve our vision. And Thad... Uh, to me was an absolute perfect fit and everything I said about Mike from a person in terms of the type of person he is all the people I talked to across college basketball across the NBA it's just so interesting to me even though their paths had crossed they knew of each other obviously uh, the same qualities in Mike that appealed to me the exact same qualities in Thad in, ter in terms of the type of person he is uh, the type of selfless leader and uh a, per a person that I could partner with, and again, knowing my responsibilities in the department, have an administrator that can help me with this vision for Indiana basketball. Here's from Tom. Can you talk about the first conversation with Mike and where it went from there? Yeah, the first conversation with Mike, uh, I, I flew to New York, as he mentioned. Uh, you know, I did do a lot over Zoom. That's, that's kind of commonplace. I am, you know, kind of like most people probably all of you on the zoom right now are a little zoomed out but we uh, we just had a terrific meeting you know I look at it more of a, as a conversation and again for me and, and I don't mean to be repetitive but it's all about the vision for the program for the future and you know I've talked to so many people but one of the things in, in for hiring a former player that uh, was really I think critical is um, you have to hire the right person first, the person that has the skill set, the knowledge, with all those things that were important in our vision. And if they happen to be a former player, that's a bonus. Uh, but but uh, I was uh, so impressed with everything I talked to Mike about, everything I learned uh, from talking to people. And, and I like to talk to people who had no idea uh, who, who I really was interested in people that, that were just talking to me because they were interested in helping me in Indiana University. So uh, Mike hit all those qualities and then was just reinforced with people that are at the highest levels of respect in the NBA and college basketball. So I just felt like, uh, again, from that first meeting on, we had a connection. Okay, this from Dustin. What did you hear from Mike in terms of style of play? that told you he would be a good fit? And what did he say or do to convince you that he would be able to make the transition from the NBA to the college game? You know, a big thing is, 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 is again, as I said, and people I talked to and then what he conveyed to me, and, and, and you know, I grew up in basketball, so I like to talk it. And, and I like to, I'm not a coach. And I told Mike, I remember, uh, you know, I don't want to pick the players we recruit. I don't want to. Uh, be a micromanager but at the same time I understand it to some level and it was just very uh, interesting to me to talk to Mike about his vision ways that he adapted to the teams he had the ways he d developed players the ways he uh, we talked about the pick and roll defense and how big that is and how really which is another important factor how the college game is really migrating to the pro game and from a style of play when I had the meetings I had with our current players, which I can't underscore how important those meetings were with our, our, our current players. Our, our current players really talked about uh, three things. They talked about relationship was really important to them. Uh, they talked about uh, skill development and how that skill development can translate to the style of play we play, but also translate to playing at the next level. And the third thing they talked about was just a style of play overall 
And uh, again, in my meetings with Mike and, and, and talking to him and then talking to several people, as I said, that I highly respected across the NBA and college basketball, um, you know, Mike uh, just, it really just felt like it was a, it was a great fit for sure. And he happens to be a, a great former player, which is nice too. This is from John. What did you think when Mike told you he needed that conversation to be in person? How quickly were you able to get on a plane? And you say you didn't know him that well, but how much in that in-person interaction did you get a sense for what kind of person Mike is? Yeah, you know, I'm, I was very fortunate to be able to get, get things moving. And in, in, in this type of search, you have to be nimble. Again, I did lock myself in the basement and, uh, you know, was on the phone, you know, pretty much nonstop. But, uh, you know, I felt like in, in talking to Mike that that I agreed with him and I was I was that interested that I felt that that was important. So I flew down there and uh, and right away. It, it's interesting because you sometimes are around people. Uh, again, I've been around Mike, uh, you know, I'd say we're acquaintances because of my relationship with the kind of the basketball family uh, as a manager. But there's certain people you're around that you feel like that you're old friends with. And it's kind of hard to describe, but you know it when you see it. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll say this, it felt the same thing with Thad as well. Uh, you, you just feel like sometimes when people are cut from the same cloth. And uh, people's, you know, I said this before, you know, your reputation, my dad said this when I was young, my dad said your reputation is built on what you do, not what you say you're gonna do. And Mike's reputation uh, from people who weren't advocating for him for the job, they were going through a list of a lot of names that, that I was just running by to get what people thought. Mike's reputation was, was impeccable. And, uh, and I certainly felt that and felt like uh, we were old friends. And again, this is a partnership. Uh, to, to move the program towards a future that, that we want to do, uh, we all have to be together on this. And it's a unified front. And uh, it's building, again, to be repetitive, but this is how I feel. Uh, we're building on this tradition, but it's got to be a, a vision for the future and where basketball is headed and where our recruits, uh, when they look and think about Indiana basketball, it's attractive because of what Coach Woodson's doing, what he can bring to them from their individual skill development, uh, what that does for our team and team success, and also for basketball beyond uh, college if that's their aspiration, which most of them it is. Okay, two, week, uh, two more questions. One from Caleb. A few weeks ago, you talked about acknowledging past accomplishments, but at the same time wanting to create a modern tradition. Coach is obviously a former player under Coach Knight. What about him did you see as a good fit to blend the two ideas to build a new tradition? Yeah, I think our tradition, you know, there's certain things that are just in the fabric that, that it just, in my view, just never change. Um, and that was established a long time ago with Coach Knight. You know, our players go to class. Um, you know, we care about the whole person. Uh, we do things right. You know, we play by the rules. And then obviously we want to compete at the highest levels. And, and those are things that just are in the, in the foundation of the program. And, and you can see um, with our fans, one of the things that's always been interesting to me and something I take a great deal of pride in is that our fans get as excited about seeing a former player at a game or reading about a former player's success in life as much as they do about their success on the court. And, um, and I, I love that part of Indiana basketball. But at the same time, you know, we've got to change and we've got to make certain we, we have a vision moving forward. And so balancing that, that past and having that foundation to build on is huge. No one will ever convince me that it's a negative to have that incredible foundation. That doesn't put pressure, I don't think at all. To me, that's our springboard for the future. But it's incumbent upon me as leading this department to make certain that I bring people together that can attract the student athletes that understand we're about the future and we have a vision for the future and that they understand that we understand what the future is of college basketball and also the professional level as well. Okay, last question from Alex. The recruiting aspect is a huge part of this job. How confident are you that Mike will be able to be successful there and what gives you that confidence? I'm 100% confident. And, it, and it's because, uh, you know, recruiting is about relationships and trust. And relationships and trust are, are, are it's easy to say, and, it, and it's hard to kind of quantify, but you know it when you see it. And uh, I will sleep great at night knowing that Mike Woodson is in the homes of recruits 
talking about not just basketball, but talking about all the important qualities in uh, entrusting uh, a young man to come play for this program. And I've got uh, zero concerns from that area. I'll sleep well at night knowing that Mike Woodson is out there recruiting student athletes to come to Indiana University to play basketball. Scott, again, thank you. Thank you all very much, and go IU. So there it is. It's official now. A former Indiana Hoosier player is back to be the head coach. And why are we in this position? Because the last time that Indiana made an NCAA tournament was 2016. Only two Big Ten programs have a longer drought of playing in the dance. Mike Woodson officially introduced as the 30th head coach in Indiana history. A lot of takeaways from this early introduction to him. He was asked about having no college experience as a head coach, and his response was, basketball is basketball. He said, Indiana basketball will always be Bob Knight, tying back to the fact that he was a player there from 76 to 80. Bob Knight was his head coach. Touched on a little bit of his personal life, including talking about losing his parents at an early age. And one of the most interesting things about this setup was the fact that Thad Mata will be a part of the program said that Woodson wants collaboration, wants resources around him, and there's a good relationship with Mata all around at Indiana. And you heard Scott Dolson talking about the fact that Mata has some deep ties to being a fan of Indiana basketball as well. We are not done with our coverage of this big news from Bloomington. The head coach of the Hoosiers, Mike Woodson, is going to join me for a discussion. You can see and hear that entire discussion coming up later on this evening on The Big Show, where we'll be talking about, among other things, the Indiana Hoosier women's program, which is playing in the Elite Eight. But again, the big story of the day, Mike Woodson is coming back home to be the new head coach for the Indiana Hoosiers. He is still the fifth all-time leading scorer in Indiana program history. Again, you can hear my interview with Woodson coming up later on this evening on The Big Show.